welcome or welcome back to my channel this is sandra and i make videos all about cyber security having a career in technology as well as work vlogs so as you guys might know on this channel we talk all about career stuff and one thing that i haven't talked about in a long time is my resume now it's updated and revamped so i kind of wanted to share that with you guys it's also on my patreon so feel free to check it out there but i'm just gonna be going over all of the little sections for you guys as well as things i included and removed all right so i'm gonna pop it up on the screen somewhere as well as whatever section i'm covering in the video but just starting out my resume has always kind of been in the same format for the last few years yeah i've thought about updating it to have some color maybe some personality but then yeah maybe maybe for a different time if i'm going to be actively applying to different roles but for now i feel like it's okay to keep it in the same format just change up the actual content but i've always had my name at the top email phone number i took off my address but i think i used to put like my city but now i feel like that i'm graduated it doesn't really make that big of an impact because if i'm getting another job i would move to whatever city the job is in but in college it definitely mattered more if you're doing an internship yeah one piece of advice that i got early on from a recruiter was that hey like you're passing out your resume to literally everybody like candy so why would you put your super super personal information on there like your address which a recruiter really doesn't need you know like all they need is the city and the state that you're in maybe the zip code at most but they don't need your address and it's like if you're so willing to give away your personal information like that to other people then how would a company trust you with their data you know if you're not thinking about these things so that is something I've kept in mind ever since like two or three years ago, I talked to that recruiter and I actually interviewed for the company that he works at three times and did not get in. So another reason to not let your failures and rejections get to you and everything happens for a reason. But yeah, that's all I have really at the top. I don't put in my LinkedIn, but I know some people do. And then my first official section is my education. A lot of people do move education down to like the middle or the bottom after they've graduated for a few years since it's less relevant. But for me, I've only been working for about a year and a half. So I felt like it was still kind of relevant. So I kept it up there and I just have my bachelor's information. And for those of you who don't know, I was an information technology major and I got a certification in computer security and digital forensics from my college. So this was just a program in my school where you basically just have to take like two or three extra classes in digital forensics, network security, quality assurance and basically you could get this certification and that's why I got it because I felt like it would kind of make my resume stand out more during interviews and that's actually what happened to help me get my first job so <laughs> definitely very helpful and then I also have my GPA on there I know some people also remove that I don't think it's necessary to have it on but I just kept it there and then I also added my CompTIA Security Plus I took the 501 edition so I put that there and I also put the expiration date because I know it only lasts three years so yeah and the certification for my school doesn't have an expiration so it's just nice that i have that extra thing on my resume so then i can always talk about it in interviews or you know talk about whatever i did in those classes so actually that's been really helpful definitely try to find some kind of free online course or like a mooc and add that to your resume under education it can actually help you stand out a lot more than you think and you don't have to pay for it all right moving down to my technical skills i added some cybersecurity tools on here but i have to give a disclaimer that I am not a professional in any of these tools. I mean, I guess I'm technically a professional since I'm working, but I'm not like a pro in these tools. I still have my programming at the top because I don't know, I just feel like I spent so many years learning how to code and, and I just feel like it deserves a space up there, like at the top, but I might actually one day just move programming a bit lower since I don't really use programming day to day anymore. But some ethical hackers do still do like scripting and coding too. So yeah, I have Java, C Sharp, Python, SQL. It's not really a programming language, but I put it up there because I didn't have it fit anywhere else. Web development, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, very basic languages. I used to have React on here, but then I was like, I do not want people to ask me questions about React in an interview, so I took it out. Especially if you're interviewing for a big tech company, if it's on there, they can ask you questions on it. If you're going to put a language on your resume, you should at least be proficient for it if you're going to be interviewing at a big tech company. If it's just like a normal company, then I'm sure you can just do like Java or Python. But yeah, if you have languages like Angular, React, yeah, definitely try to be proficient or intermediate in them. All right, so my new section in here, I used to have something else. I used to have tools, but it just became so irrelevant that I added security and capture the flag tools, or like a section for them. Um, so Metasploit, Remina, Covenant, Bloodhound, LDAP Domain Dump, and Burp Suite. I should have put MMAP on here. I think I'm gonna do that now. I'm literally editing <laughs> as, as we speak, so. Uh. All right, so I just added Nmap on here. So all of these tools I've used a few times, but not to the point where I use it every day. But I also feel like 
CTF, there's so, so many tools. And like, just in terms of like pen testing, there's so, so many tools that you can be using. And I don't really think there's ever gonna be a time where you're gonna be using them every single day. Like Romina, it helps you get into remote desktops. And I've only used it for one capture the flag, but I used it multiple times during that capture the flag challenge. I mean, I feel like I got pretty familiar with it, but obviously I'm by no means a pro. Metasploit, I've also used a few times across multiple capture the flag events. Burp Suite is probably the one that is most common for me, like most used. Covenant and Bloodhound, I've also used a few times. LDAP Domain Dump is really, really useful. I try to use it a lot and it's exactly what it sounds like. It basically dumps a bunch of domain information for you and then you can just view it on a browser, which is so, so useful and convenient. Actually, someone on the red team at my company recommended this tool to me when I was first getting started and yeah, now I just add it to my toolkit. Burp Suite, obviously very, very important. Nmap, I I mean, most people probably start their testing with an Nmap scan just to see open ports, the services running on those ports. And I'm actually just learning a lot more about Nmap because my mentor on the red team actually gave us some homework on the tool. So yeah, I basically have been reading a lot of the documentation for Nmap and I had no idea that you can time things, you can make it slow, you can make it faster. There's like five different levels to it. And that's just one of the unique things to do just so you don't trigger any like IDS or intrusion detection systems on whatever target that you're you know, trying to hack into. Obviously don't hack into like someone's live website and make sure it's like a actual testing grounds or like um, capture the flag challenge kind of thing. But yeah, that is what I have on technical tools. So I believe if I go into an interview, I can definitely answer questions on these tools. I don't know if I can use them all proficiently during an interview. It was gonna be like a hands-on interview and they're actually gonna have me hack into something. I've never actually had like a experience level cybersecurity interview yet. So I will let you guys know what my experiences are if I ever have one of those where they're actually telling me to hack into something. But for the most part, I can answer questions about these at a standard level how to use them so definitely keep that in mind and then going into technical experience this is a new section that I added I didn't actually put my company name due to confidentiality reasons and I also put a very high level description of what I do so if you look at the little bullet points under my first job on here and most of these are in chronological order so yeah they're basically just roles I've had some of them are concurrent but most of them are just back to back but yeah, I definitely think my bullet points on my resume definitely need to be changed up a little bit because last year when I went to the Grace Hopper conference, I got this free resume scanning. Um, they do this free service where they look through your resume and they kind of give you advice for what to change. And it's actually really, really good advice and it's free, but you have to pay for it if you want extra advice on how to fix it from one of their resume experts. So I didn't pay for the actual service, but I got a lot of advice from them. And they basically told me my resume had a lot of bullet points that say like what I did, but not as much about what the impact of what I did was. So definitely keep that in mind while you're looking at these bullet points. I do want to eventually make it so that they show the impact of what I did as well. So just to explain my pen testing rotation, I put pen testing and conducting security assessments for web applications to find security vulnerabilities very very high level for you know what a pen tester does i also have what i did at my first rotation at my current company and what i did there i developed .NET network application features using an mvc format which just means model view controller if you're a developer it's just like a way you can code things and make things easily reusable make code easily reusable it's my first time using mvc which is surprising because i feel like it's actually pretty common, but yeah, I did, I did not use that in college. And then creating monitoring metrics across cybersecurity engineering teams. Very basic, very high level. I did some of that in my first role with my first manager, and that definitely helped me learn a bit of like business processes of things, as well as metrics, because metrics is very, very complicated when you get to like a real company and then, and then you see all this data that's everywhere and you don't know where it is and if it's accurate and where it's coming from and aggregating from. Yeah, data is definitely a very, very big part of security and having accurate data is like one of the most important things, but it's actually really hard because data pipelines go everywhere and you don't always know exact sources and if the data gets changed from certain sources to the next, it's very hard to keep track of. So if you're like in data science and trying to switch into cybersecurity, I am sure there are many, many jobs for you out there. Okay, so going into all of my previous jobs that I've had, I won't go into this as in depth because I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of this because it's not really as related to cybersecurity. But the next job on my resume is my software engineering intern role at JP Morgan Chase. I was there the summer of my junior year 
and this is also the project that I've talked to you guys many times about which actually helped me get my foot in the door for this current cybersecurity role that I'm in and I also have another video on the resume that helped me get this first cybersecurity role which didn't have all the cybersecurity stuff on it but I can link that below because I made a video about it like a year ago but it can also give you guys an idea of what the changes were as well as maybe the things that helped me stand out when I was trying to get into my current job right now so yeah this is like the after resume and that was like the before but we basically designed and built a full stack SaaS distribution utility or application. It was basically just a web application where SaaS is actually kind of like a data set or it's like an ASCII text file kind of thing. I would say kind of similar to JSON, but it's basically kind of like a text file if you want to think about it that way. And it has a bunch of data sets in it, or maybe even a CSV file is more like it. And basically they only wanted certain people to view certain files or certain even fields in those files based on whatever confidentiality level that you have. If you have a really low confidentiality level, then you can't see SSNs, you know, or like addresses or people's private information. So we basically made a tool for whoever uses this application, they can basically go on there and submit some kind of access application for whatever fields or files that they want to see. And we only let them see the actual fields that they are allowed to see. And that was not necessarily like a security application, but it was kind of security focused if you think about it because it's like on a need to know basis it's the lowest level of privilege it's like least privilege access so that's definitely a very big concept in like access management in cybersecurity so i was able to talk about that a lot in my cybersecurity interviews for this current role that i'm in right now so definitely the way you frame things and the point of view that you're speaking from can be really really important when you're interviewing for a new job that isn't necessarily in the same field but can be related or like cross-related based on your previous experience and what was really interesting about my JP Morgan experience was that I worked in a team of four interns so three other people all right the next three roles I'm going to talk about very briefly because they're less related I feel like with tech girls I do volunteering to teach middle school girls how to code and there's usually a weekend thing where they have in-person courses students kind of come to school and we basically teach them different classes through JavaScript, C Sharp, C, there's building your own website there's a lot of different courses that tech girls actually provides us the learning material for and then we go through them with the girls and I still do this now sometimes and my sister is actually very involved with tech girls too and if you guys don't know my sister is also in tech but she is in data science I think I might want to invite her on the channel sometime if you guys are interested I know one of you asked for some data science slash cybersecurity comparisons so Maybe I'm going to bring her on and kind of see what she has to share with us. Teaching assistant at my college, I was a TA for four computer information security classes. I don't remember all of them, which is kind of sad, but component-based software design, which is my C-sharp class, that absolutely was my favorite. Um, that teacher, I feel like, changed my life. He was actually the one that made me really love coding, and I still keep up with him to this day, so definitely one of my favorite teachers. And digital forensics, I was also a TA for quality assurance and testing, and then computational probability and statistics. So those are the four classes I TA'd in college. Definitely a very good learning experience, and also it was just like a nice part-time job um, to kind of keep my skills intact. So if you guys are in college still, definitely try to get a TA position or a teaching position because it shows leadership. It shows that you're a teacher and you're able to like lead a classroom and you know teach during a lab session. So it's definitely very very helpful on your resume to stand out with recruiters and different jobs that you might have no matter what field you're going into in technology it just shows that you're yeah it just makes you look good i don't know but yeah i definitely really liked being a ta i was also a cis peer tutor so i tutored for all of the classes in my department and that was in my senior year so by then i basically took all of the classes already from beginner courses in python to data structures and algorithms honestly most people go in there for coding help okay so my last piece of experience on here because i deleted some because i try to fit in my like new job role but for the bureau of labor statistics this was an externship so the bls basically came to my school and taught a course on how to use their data and i basically worked on a data project where i used all of their data and and try to find different comparisons or findings from what was in the data and in this case i actually researched a topic that is really interesting to me which is the women's pay gap and basically the differences between race because there is a very very big difference between not only women's and men's salaries but also between races of women and men so definitely really really interesting and at the end i basically presented it to the bls and they can decide whether or not they want to use it in their official publishings so i mean that's really really cool because the bls is an official government agency or department and something else i didn't put on here is my undergrad research working on a big data team with one of the professors at my school um, i did a lot of data cleaning stuff and 
data collection because like, all the PhDs and master's students were the ones who were actually doing like the analysis for the data but it was just kind of cool to get my hands into some research and like I said earlier data science and software development was kind of like the two things I was very interested in prior to coming into cybersecurity so it's interesting where life takes you you know like I just feel like I was headed towards one route but then that one thing on my resume about little certification I did in college for computer security and digital forensics actually was the thing that got me a job compared to everything else on my resume so that's why it's actually really important to keep your resume updated and add in the things that kind of like make you stand out most people maybe wouldn't see it on a resume or they'll look at it and think whoa that's pretty interesting um like tell me more about that because you never know what is going to stand out to a recruiter or whoever you're talking to that might be recruiting for a job so i think that's one of the biggest pieces of advice i can give honestly i, I would have never thought i would ever be in cybersecurity, but here i am okay so last section i don't know how long this video is right now but it is kind of like my fun section which is volunteering and activities so i have on here some of the nonprofits that i volunteered for as well as conferences so the grace hopper conference and the ascend conference i used to put dates on here but i mean i've been to the grace hopper conference for the last four years which is actually kind of crazy to think about because i had no idea it's been four years but time really flies by fast after you graduate i feel like but i also feel like that's one of the talking points that you can bring up especially with the recruiters like most of them if they're in tech know what the grace hopper conference is it's nice to add in a conference or a hackathon or a nonprofit or some kind of event that you volunteered for or attended because you never know what is going to ring a bell with recruiters and like what they're going to ask questions off of like oh i see that you went to grace hopper oh, our company recruits there every year and it's like oh wow yeah and then you can start talking about like the tech sessions what you learned if you presented a grace hopper your experience there as a candidate so there's so many ways the conversation can go yeah it's just nice to have those extra touch points that kind of make you like more whole and more human and not just like work 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 all right so i also have on here hackathons so these are kind of like the hackathons i've attended of course there were more but i feel like these are the ones that I've attended multiple years, and that's why I added that on here. I was also a co-organizer for my school's hackathon. It's definitely a really fun experience. And I used to have student leadership on here, but I took that out because I'm no longer a student. And yeah, that basically covers my whole resume, which is kind of crazy. All right, so I've talked a lot and very fast, but thank you guys so much for staying with me. And feel free to drop any questions that you might have about resumes, cover letters even, even though you know I don't usually write cover letters, but I can definitely answer questions about them if you have any. It just blows my mind that people are actually taking the advice that I'm giving and, and then actually getting something out of it. So yeah, I'm just so, so happy that you guys are here with me. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see any videos, definitely let me know. I do have a backlog, but I'm honestly trying to re-ramp it a little bit because I've had videos on there that I have not made for like six months. So I'm just thinking maybe I just don't want to make those videos or I don't know, something's just blocking me from making a lot of these videos. But yeah, definitely let me know if there's any videos that you would like to see from me in the future and I am happy to add that to my backlog. We have a lot of really exciting stuff coming up on the channel too, so definitely stick around for that. I've also linked below a lot of the really popular ones on the channel. But yeah, I post videos every Wednesday at 2 p.m. and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.